So here we are, six videos down, and now we're at the newest incarnation of my favorite series to date, 20 absolutely moronic, garbage, and useless Sonic facts. We're back for what else but season two. I'm super hyped to get back into these and share some more brain-killing Sonic information, but to make this one even more special, I've got another special guest here today, the one and only Super Sonic Blake. What's up Sonic fans, it's Blake from the Super Sonic Blake channel, here to go over some more useless facts about the blue rat who's been sparking some controversy about certain level designs recently. Super glad to have another guest on to talk about dumb Sonic information together. But before we do that, I've got one quick announcement, being that we now have channel memberships. If you want to support the channel just a wee bit more and get some exclusive awards like a badge next to your name or exclusive emojis, feel free to join the channel. Of course this isn't required, just an option if you want to go above and beyond with your channel supporting this. But without further ado, let's just cut right to the chase and let's get into some more trash. Quit whispering in my ear, bro! Now I'm sure we've all seen Sonic's iconic shoes countless times with their gold buckles, white straps, and red colors. However, as it turns out, you may have been seeing them wrong this entire time, as these parts here are not Sonic's socks poking out of them, but they are actually the tops of his boots. Confirmed not once, but twice by Naoto Oshima, Sonic's shoes aren't even shoes at all, they were boots the entire time. Good luck trying to unsee that now. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> In Sonic Boom Season 2, Episode 28, there's actually a reference to The Simpsons. Okay, now saying that out loud, that's not really surprising, but in Robots from the Sky Part 3, when the robots take Sonic and Tails to Hypnobot, one of them says this. Sir, we found these two surface dwellers loitering in Sector 7G. Which is, of course, a reference to the running joke between Smithers and Mr. Burns. Why is that man in pink? Oh, that's Homer Simpson, sir. He's one of your boobs from Sector 7G. Simpson, eh? What was New Goblin doing on the anime shell? In 2020, for promotion for the Sonic movie, only in Hong Kong, Paramount teamed up with the internet company Netgear, in which if you purchase certain Netgear products that look like Kylo Ren's ship during the promotion, you would receive not one, but two tickets to see Sonic on the big screen. These advertisements from the time are kind of a spectacle now, considering that one legit just uses the OG Sonic because, I don't know, they felt like it that morning. Hello. Did you know it's actually possible to access an Avatar stage and a Sonic stage in Sonic Forces? If you do a boost jump at this specific spot in Sunset Heights and get it just right, you can actually make it to the beginning of the Avatar's Park Avenue. There's not all too much to do here, though you can boost up this wall here, which is kind of fun. And there is some wonky collision. I mean, hey, at least it's some reason to play Sonic Forces in the year 2022, I guess. And by the way, thanks to Sonic Apocalypse Gaming for this gameplay, since I wasn't about to use 17 gigabytes to record one goddamn level. <laughs> There's a decent chance you've probably heard of the YouTube channel Preston Plays, considering his size and massive view counts. But did you notice that he actually made a cameo in Sonic Movie 2? In the volleyball scene, he's one of the guys on Tom's team that gets absolutely destroyed by Randall's squad. It's a nice little easter egg and all, but he actually got to make an entire behind the scenes video on it. Filmed in Hawaii, it's got a ton of cool stuff in it, like appearances from all of the main actors, including James and Ben as Sonic voices. It's really cool they went this all out for a two second second little easter egg. My name is Walter Hartwell White. As we all know, Sonic made his grandiose appearance in the film Wreck-It Ralph, where he was of course the glue that held that entire film together, but anyway, when Ralph walks out of Pac-Man, Sonic talks on the monitor, telling about how if you die outside your own game, you die forever. But have you ever noticed just something off about him here? Well you should, because they forgot to give him his eye shines. Good luck trying to unsee that one too. Well this is a horrific oversight and I'll never forgive Disney for it, at least they fixed it in a sequel. Got it right on the poster. How do they f this up? You can't hurt my feelings if I'm in on the joke. Now we all know that game journalists are high class, respected, and are always looked to for video game news. Which is why it was an extreme surprise when in 2015, when Sega announced they wouldn't be having a booth at that year's E3, IGN posted a video about it. But the thing is, the thumbnail was random Sonic assets thrown together, including this fan-made piece of classic Knuckles art. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Henderson. On the very limited E3 2018 Super Shadow Funko Pop, there was a slight color error. Well, kinda. Since while on the actual figure, nothing's wrong. But on the promotional art, if you look at Shadow's ears on the figure, they actually made them red instead of the normal tan. Why this happened only on the digital render is anyone's guess. But at least they fixed it before it came out and became a holy grail. What now? While first four figures made this classic Metal Sonic statue back in 2012, they were actually planning on making a modern one not too long ago. On Christmas Day 2018, first four figures made a Facebook poll asking what pose people wanted more for their, at that point in production, 
modern Metal Sonic statue. The post included these two pieces of concept art that showed what it would have looked like. And looking at it here, it definitely would have fit in right with the other modern statues they've done. However, since then, we haven't gotten any more info regarding it, since it probably got cancelled, as while the highest vote was for option B of the design, the second highest vote was for them to just not make one at all. Very sad. In one of my personal favorite games, VR Chat, a recurring event is held in Japan called Virtual Market, in which companies sponsor the event and create booths you can walk in and buy some in-game items while they promote their products. And in the fourth one in 2020, Sega was in attendance, with their 60th anniversary booth as shown. In it, you could have purchased game avatars of characters from Virtual Fighter and Space Channel 5, as well as being given a free virtual t-shirt. I don't really know if this counts as a Sonic fact per se, but there was this giant Sonic model outside, and inside had an Olympic track a la Mario in Sonic 2020, so... Yeah. 100% chance of thunder! Kajiga! Kajiga! When Sonic Lost World released nearly a decade ago, Sega did only the most rational of promotion for the game. Of course, printable cutout Zeddy masks, you've got all six of them, ready to be cut out and placed on your face. No longer will you have sleepless nights looking up at the stars wondering if you'll be able to have Zaman on your face, because if you want to, all six are linked in the description below. Flay. Soon. Now, the Adventure Era was a pretty experimental time for Sonic's design, mainly in the way of translating it into 3D, which led to many odd-looking Sonic renders from various culprits, but I don't think any take the cake quite like this one. Found in an old magazine from when SA2 came out. Me while editing this, apparently it was from the UK's Dreamcast Magazine, issue 14. Funko Pop. This lad is truly magical. Whether it be his four fingers, his long-ass back spikes, or his Sunday paper-looking head proportions, this man just hits different. I know Jax has been doing some pretty crazy characters recently, but I mean, come on. We need this guy in there with all the others. He deserves recognition for all he's done for this country. Hey, Goog, wanna come over to my house today? They all hated me. In mid-2014, Sega started a weekly social media event called Travel Tuesdays, in which you were tasked with taking pictures of some kind of Sonic, whether it be a plush, a figure, etc at various landmarks around the world. It's such a simple but fun idea and these photos were just awesome. We got pictures like the 5 inch Jazzware Sonic in France, the 3 inch one in Australia, the Jazzware Sonic in Monaco, the Jazzware Sonic in Monaco, I don't know how to fucking pronounce that. The Sonic Nendroid in Belarus, and many more. They obviously don't do it anymore, but it was just such a cool little thing that was so cool to see back then. Who knows, maybe they'll bring it back someday. But even if it doesn't, we've at least still got Travel Sonic. Is there a knife in my dick? There's a knife in your dick, yes. Yeah. While everyone out here loving the new Jack Sonic advent calendar, only the true chads prefer the 2008 advent calendar. Released as a promotional item slash freebie for game stores and reviewers, it isn't all too special. Simply having little chocolates inside, which I can only hope were little Sonic heads or something. And the box for this one's pretty nice looking. It's not all too crazy, with a simple starry Christmas sky and some Christmas Sonic art. Just a neat little obscure thing that I thought was cool. Not really much else. Here, how about you cease this bitch crying? <laughs> In 2019, during a preview event in the UK for Team Sonic Racing, several tournaments in the game were held. And the cool part is that they actually gave away awards to the winners. If you beat others in certain categories, you were given these super sick trophies as a reward. They're pretty small, but have these super nice golden plaques on them with the reason you won on them. But atop those set a huge green chaos symbol. It's extremely high quality, and it sits upon a clear stand, and it just looks so cool. We could only manage to find two of these out in the wild, with the first being owned by games journalist Greg Burke, who got first place and was given his, and out of all people, Ant Dude, who was the fastest racer at this event, scoring him his. These are just so cool. Hopefully more can be found in the future. Okay, get in. In the has-been pilot, before Charlie goes on the news, there's this promo image that they show on the screen. But if you look closely at her hair in this, you'll notice she actually has two hair ties rather than the one she normally has. It's kind of funny since while this is a pretty minuscule thing and it really doesn't matter in the slightest, it kind of foreshadowed her redesign, which I think is pretty neat. Break it down, won't you? Kidding me? This is hand carved mahogany. For the Jack Sonic two four inch figures, the Sonic and Knuckles both come with snowboards from the fight scene in Siberia. However, if you look at them, you'll realize that in reality, they look nothing like they do in the movie, considering they actually used pieces from the bad Nicks to snowboard. These are actually from this piece of concept art, which you can see they are both using the ones that came with the figurines. No! You have a perfect civilization! Why would you want to add a woman to it? For some reason, because Sega hates reasonable thinking, they decided to make this dope-ass limited edition Sonic Forces themed PS4 when the game came out. It's incredibly sick with the game's logo alongside the outline art of Sonic Tails and Knuckles and the controller was decked out with the Resistance Star and the Eggman Empire's logo too. They even made two versions, a black one and a white one. 
However, the catch with this thing though, is that it was only available in mainland China. They made this whole thing looking dope as hell in two versions for an awful game only in China. That is the most Sega sentence anyone's ever said. All right, whose joke idea was it to order a pizza? If you're this far in the Chad Bubble Squirtles video, you'll definitely know about this little guy right here, the Jazzwares E3 Promotional White Wisp Plush. Made by Jazzwares and thought to have only been given out once in E3 2010 as a promotional gift for testing out the original Sonic colors for the Wii, this plush is decently rare nowadays. But here's a useless fact regarding it. Did you know there was not one, not two, but three total chances throughout the 2010 year to pick up this guy for yourself? On August 20th, 2010, the official Sega Twitter account tweeted the following tweet. Prize 1. The Ickle Wickle Sonic Colors Wisp from E3. Aw, it's cute! It's yours if you're the 25th person to DM the following key phase. So, if you were specifically lucky person number 25 to DM the tweet about the Ickle Bickle to Sega, congratulations, you just got yourself an official Jazzwares Wisp plush in one of the most obscure possible ways I've ever seen in all of my years of collecting. Two months after what was thought to have been the only known possible way to obtain this plush. Oh yeah. I know there's only supposed to be one fact per slide, but I thought I'd throw it in here anyways. There is an official Sonic Colors candy out there, somewhere in the world. Now this is just the surface of some of the history regarding the Jazzwares Wisp plush. If you want to know everything there is possible to know about it, I'll be making a video going over its entire history very soon on my channel. Ronald Reagan was right. In 2020, in promotion once again for Sonic 1, Paramount took a road trip to a town by the name of Sterling Heights, Michigan. They did so to do a photo shoot with the movie Sonic mascot, alongside the town's widely known huge sculpture which clearly resembles a giant ring. However, the dubbed name of this monument was at one point, The Golden Butthole. So when Sonic came, it was kind of a massive event for the town. Go to the butthole and meet Sonic. There are even many news articles from around the area reporting it, spreading the word of Sonic's butthole appreciation. However, while this monument is very well known, that doesn't mean it's really beloved. Considering that some taxpayers weren't too happy that their money was going to a statue that was dubbed the Golden Butthole. So for years, there have been many protests concerning the statue, claiming it's inappropriate and childish, or that it looked like a giant golden Sonic ring. And this was years before Sonic came, by the way. It got so bad that one day, protesters showed up with signs pointing out the name, and Sonic plushes to protest the statue. This was just mental. People showed up protesting Sonic and buttholes. It seems to have worked, though, considering that the town officially renamed the statue to The Halo. While that did calm the nerves of the statue's opposers, many felt that they'd been robbed of the name Golden Butthole. So things like a Facebook group was created, a Stranger Things trailer parody called Stranger Rings featuring the statue was made, etc. But most importantly, one man, one man named One of the leading figures in the campaign to bring back the name, saw Sonic's arrival as an opportunity. An opportunity for change. So he protested the name while Sonic was there. This man was a true righteous warrior who went out and fought for not just our rights, but butthole rights everywhere. I cannot even fathom the fact that any of this actually happened. Like first the plushes and then someone protesting the name Golden Butthole with Sonic there, like what the hell? This has to be some kind of fever dream. And that is yet another 20 absolutely useless Sonic facts. It's nice to have the series back and be able to share all this stupid information with you guys again. And hell, with how much Sonic's been popping off after the second movie, there's even more people to hear these facts than ever. So much better talking about all these facts with you guys than my IRL friends. Be shy. But anyway, of course, massive thanks to Supersonic Blake for joining us today and talking about all these facts with me. Honestly, out of all the useless Sonic facts Bulba Squirtles talked about, I consider the facts we went over today the best of the batch. And that may or may not be just because I'm in this video. All jokes aside, thank you so much for having me, man. I've been a huge fan of the series and the channel overall for a while now, so it's awesome to finally be a part of one of these videos. I'll keep it short and sweet. My thing is Sonic plush videos, so if you're interested in me and my channel, my channel name is Super Sonic Blake. Thanks again for having me, man. So yeah, go check him out if you haven't already. And uh, any other YouTubers who want to be in one of these, the comments are always there. You can DM me on Twitter. You can send a letter to my home address at 146. But for now, subscribe, check out my other stuff, and remember, don't subscribe to Paramount Plus, then forget to cancel your membership so they keep charging you. I could have spent that money on V-Bucks.